the whole year has been about them condescending, trying to silence us, saying we don't know the difference between illegal and unlawful. And it's just, they didn't act lawfully time and time and time again. And now they're going to appeal it, even though the judges were very, very clear on how much they got their law wrong. Jamie Klingler is co-founder of Reclaim These Streets and joins me on the line now. Good evening, Jamie. Good evening. You must be elated. I wondered if you could just set out for us what this victory means for you. Well, it's it's academic in terms of the, the vigil is in the past, but in terms of future rights for protesters and the human right being enshrined in law, that's where it comes in. It's not up to the police to say who can and can't protest. And they made a blanket ban and then denied that they had a blanket ban while telling us that no more than two people could assemble at the same time. And And the crux of your argument when you took the Met Police to court was what? Was that there were public health issues at the time and there were COVID restrictions, but they did not at all do a proportionate review of our human right to assemble. So Human Rights Act uh, sections 10 and 11 are about our right to gather with reasonable excuse. And actually a year ago tonight, um, Harriet Harman sent a message to Cressida Dick and said, this is a reasonable excuse and I will be attending. And at that point, they should have just knocked it dead and stopped trying to silence us. The whole year has been about them condescending, trying to silence us, saying we don't know the difference between illegal and unlawful. And it's just they didn't act lawfully time and time and time again. And now they're going to appeal it, even though the judges were very, very clear on how much they got their law wrong. Well, I've got the words from Lord Justice Warby in front of me. It was pretty damning. Um, They said none of the force's decisions was in accordance with the law. The evidence showed that the force failed to perform its legal duty to consider whether the claimants might have a reasonable excuse for holding the gathering or to conduct the fact-specific proportionality assessment required in order to perform that duty. Were you surprised by quite how damning the verdict was? Not really, because we went to court a year ago Hmm. and we had a judge say, you have to give them the rules and they have to follow them. And we went and met with the, the police to say, what are these rules? And they refused and they sent out a press release. So they didn't follow the judgment and they just called us naive little girls. Well, these naive little girls just won. They didn't actually use those words, did they? Um, Cressida Dick at the Home Affairs Committee said we were naive young women that meant well. <laughs> I mean, how would you like the new Metropolitan Police Chief to address this judgment and sort of change the the attitude and the culture that um, sort of pervades wh- how the police treated you? Well, there's no accountability. Like there's no, we got this wrong. Like Harriet Harman just said, are you kidding me? They're going to appeal it. There's no reason to appeal this, accept it and move on. And and again, the war boys thing, they, they appealed four times. The Met has like, there's no sexism, there's no racism, there's no homophobia. If you don't admit these things are in place, you don't fix them. There's not room for reform. And we need a visionary. We need somebody who's going to fight to bring the Met up to speed. Well, I should put the Met's response out of fairness. They've said uh, it's incumbent on them to ensure that this judgment does not unduly inhibit its ability and that of police forces across the country to effectively balance competing rights in a way that is operationally deliverable. Slightly wordy, but I guess you can see the point they're trying to make. So how how did they proportionally police the weekend of um, Wembley? Hmm. The, the euros was that proportionate policing because they arrested 40 people that weekend and four people at the vigil for, for sarah everett mm-hmm. like what they did that weekend but also we went to them proactively with plans with stewards with a pa system we had the infrastructure to make it a safe place for women to come and have a moment of silence they like exasperated the situation they gave it tons of press they tried to silence us and then they went in heavy-handed None of this made any sense and none of it should have happened. It all should have just been, they should have been handing us tissues and kneeling with us. And I just don't understand who is making these decisions. DAC twist in court. There was a document about the risk assessment of our vigil and the number one risk was bad optics for the Met. Well, they nailed that one all (laughs) on their own. Jamie Klingler, thank you very much for joining us. And we're going to be hearing from Patsy Stevenson, who was, of course, the woman who was pinned to the ground by the Met Police in that iconic picture that went all around the world. Uh, We'll hear from her on the ladder at 6.30. A digital subscription to The Times and Sunday Times gives you full access to all the articles on the website and app, plus email newsletters, offers, competitions and more. And if you sign up today, you can get your first month free. So to find out more, head to the website at thetimes.co.uk. Coming up, we'll speak to one of John Burko's 
opponents who John Burke has always denied being a bully and a liar, but the common or Commons authorities thought differently, banned him from holding a parliamentary pass. We speak to one of his accusers about whether he believes justice has been served. It is now coming up to 20 past six. I'm Kathy Newman. This is Drive on Times Radio. Thank <laughs> you.